So, what's going on guys, and welcome back to episode number 3 of our Bournemouth career mode. And as you can see here, we have got the first game of this episode, and it is going to be away from home at West Ham. So, it is going to be a very difficult game at the Olympic Stadium, and it is going to be a tough, tough task. But we are going to go ahead in our green kit, and we are going to be playing at the London Stadium, as I just said. But this is going to be the starting lineup, pretty much exactly the same as the win against Manchester United. And let's see if we can replicate what we did against United and go ahead and beat West Ham. It's going to be a tough one at their new stadium, but I'm sure we can do well. So a good chance here. Harry Arter's on the ball. Harry Arter through to Max Gradle. Max Gradle's going to whip the ball across the face of the goal. And there wasn't actually anyone there. And Darren Randolph picks up the missing pieces. But what I never understand with West Ham, why is Darren Randolph playing this game and not Adrian? Adrian is an absolute beast. And yet, for every for some strange reason, it seems like they just do not like playing him. But uh, Masuaku trying to catch up with Jordan Ibe here. And Ibe cuts back inside. Plays the ball to Callum Wilson. What a turn that is. Callum Wilson goes for goal and 14 minutes in we find the back of the net what a fantastic run it was from Jordan Ibe he manages to cut back inside he plays the ball to Colin Wilson and what about that for a turn from Callum Wilson Jaron Randolph isn't very happy with his centre backs there as we completely turn James Collins with the sheer pace and Callum Wilson picks up his second goal of the season and his second goal in his second consecutive game what a way to start this game at the London Stadium so Callum Wilson finds the ball with Jack Wilshire. Jack Wilshire through to Harry Arter. Arter out wide to Rashford. Rashford to strike it first time. And Rashford's not going to want to see the replays of that one, is he? Very, very poor strike from the young English international as he completely scuffs his shot. And he couldn't do what Callum Wilson done earlier on in the game, which is fire the ball into the bottom corner. Good chance for West Ham. They've got the ball with Dimitri Payet. He tries to whip the ball in the box and surely that's going to be an easy catch for Donnarumma, which it is. And he plays the ball out to Jordan Ibe as we try and launch yet another attack for ourselves. But West Ham, to be honest, they're not causing that many problems going forward. But at the back, they do look very shaky as you play the ball through to Callum Wilson. Wilson tries to thread the ball through to uh, Gradle. Gradle out wide. It's not a good ball through to Rashford, but he plays the ball back to Jordan Ibe. Jordan Ibe goes for goal and we mess up our chance there. I thought that was going to be a fantastic catch attack but a little bit unfortunate Jordan Ibe's shot does get a very good block on it from James Collins as it does go wide off the post but we're going to try and whip the ball in the box here from Jack Wilshire it's going to come to Fosu Men so he has a free header and um, not the sort of header that he's going to want to see again either. He needs to get a lot more power on that header if he wanted any chance of beating Darren Randolph from there. So we squeeze the ball through to Marcus Rashford here. Rashford, we do know, is very quick across the ground. He's going to try and cut back inside to just call full the defenders. He goes for goal. He's going to come to Callum Wilson. Callum Wilson plays the ball out wide and we win ourselves a penalty. The referee, I didn't actually see what happened there. Collins is obviously the guilty person. I don't know what Collins done. What did he do against anyone? He actually took out Callum Wilson from behind. I think that's a little bit harsh but it is going to be the chance for us from the penalty spot to make it two it's going to be Max Gradle who's going to be our normal penalty taker do we give it to Max Gradle do we give it to Callum Wilson I think Callum Wilson should be our normal penalty taker shouldn't he it's going to be Callum Wilson let's see what Callum can do he's going to be up against Rashford uh, Rashford he's going to be up against Randolph he goes the wrong uh, Rashford uh, oh my god I don't know what I'm talking Randolph goes the right way and what about that for a save from the penalty spot Wow, we should have actually scored to be honest, but it doesn't matter. We're still 1-0 up. So guys, here's a question for you. Considering we missed a penalty in that game, who do you want to be our normal spot tick taker? So like the f every time we get a penalty, who do we give it to? Unless of course we have people on hat tricks, but... Who do you think should be our primary penalty taker? Let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, the person that gets the most names uh, will, of course, win. But we end up winning that game 1-0 away from home at the London Stadium. And West Ham, considering they've had an awful start in real life, they haven't had a much better start in the game either. So we now get a transfer for Callum Wilson, and they're going to offer us 10.5 million. It's actually from West Ham, but we're going to go ahead and reject that one because we don't want to leave Callum Wilson. And uh, also Middlesbrough say that. But look at his morale. Why does his morale say he's leaving? Does he want to leave the club? Um, let's see. Callum Wilson, yes. I spent a lot of time considering my future, and although the timing is bad, I know that I want to change the scenery. I'd like a move immediately. Wow, Callum Wilson. I wanted to keep you. You were going to be in my plans. You were going to be my star striker, and you want to leave. So having a look at the board here, the board has held an extraordinary meeting to discuss the Callum Wilson affair, and we feel it's in the best interest of the club to allow the player to leave. 
please ensure this happens. So, guys, we're going to have to let Callum Wilson go. A very sad situation because I was really looking forward to playing with him. And now he wants to leave the club. So we now have the second game of the episode, which is going to be in the EFL Cup, and it's going to be up against Accrington. So what, in fact, we are going to do, we're going to go ahead and sim this game, because I do believe um, it's not the most interesting game, of course. It's going to be up against Accrington Stanley. We've changed the whole lineup in this one, and I think we should come out victorious, as we do. We end up winning the game 1-0, and actually, as you can see there, King scored in the 87th minute, and uh, Wilson picked up a slight knock as well, which is a little bit disappointing, but to be honest, I don't really want to play them games, not in the early stages anyway of the competition because it's not really worth it. But having a look here, player injured and he's going to be out for five weeks, which is a little bit disappointing. And the player conversation, Brad Smith says he wants to make a request to play a little bit more. Callum Walsh wants to leave the club, but mate, if there's no one coming in for you, we're not going to let you go, are we? We are, however, obviously going to play this game, which is going to be away from home up against Crystal Palace. So it's going to be a difficult game for us, as Crystal Palace normally are quite difficult to play against on FIFA. But we are going to be playing in what kits? Because that's going to be quite clashed. We're going to have to play in the green kit again to try and prevent clashes. Because obviously, they're going to be playing in their home kit because, of course, they are the home side. But we're going to be playing at Selhurst Park. It's going to be a difficult one, but hopefully we can come out victorious. So um, Crystal Palace have a really good chance here. They play the ball in. It gets a good strike on it. And Donnarumma has to make a comfortable save in goal for us there. But we lose the ball again. Lovely ball bets play through. Just punch and punch and goes for goal. And five minutes in, Donnarumma has been beaten for the first time of the season. And punch and scores a fantastic goal. A little bit disappointing there. But just five minutes in, we concede so early on. I'm very disappointed that Donnarumma's throw in goes straight to their player. The player board's punching, and what about that for a first time strike into the back of the net? Donnarumma can't make amends for his mistake, and six minutes in, we're 1 0 down. So the ball's been played through to Max Gradle. Max Gradle back out wide. He tries to thread the ball through to Jack Wilshire, but the Crystal Palace defender does in fact read that one like a book and he comes out to make the interception but a little disappointing that Crystal Palace have got so many men forward and for some reason we're really short of defenders at the back a lovely header from Francis and we win that one back through Jordan I but we can see the ball over the top to Gradle it's a good ball and um, this is just end to end stuff here play it for some reason only 25 minutes in it looks like both teams are going for another goal and Crystal Palace aren't happy just to sit back on their 1-0 lead but Smith's on the ball Swift's going to try and find the ball back to Jordan Ibe. Jordan Ibe cuts back inside. He's going to go for a strike from range. And that one was very close to rustling in the back of the net. How close was that? Crystal Palace have another good chance. They go for the strike. And this time Donnarumma makes a comfortable save as he pushes that one wide for a corner kick. But Crystal Palace, for some reason, seem really dangerous on the break. Good chance for Crystal Palace again. And they've made it two just for the half-time break. This time Christian Benteke scores the goal. He does his trademark celebration. And that is a fantastic goal. A lovely ball into Christian. A lovely chest down. And Donnarumma's be been beaten twice in this half. He wasn't getting nowhere near that one. He couldn't do anything about that one either. But we're 2-0 down. And from the half-time break, the manager's going to have to set them down and uh, speak to them. Because this has been an embarrassing performance from Bournemouth. Another decent chance for Bournemouth. They're going to make it three. And they have... Oh, dearie me, what is going wrong at the back for us today? Jason Puncher picks up his second of the game, and the scoreline sits at Crystal Palace 3, Bournemouth 0. No, this is the first thrashing we have been given in FIFA 17, to be honest. We have been absolutely, completely dominated by Crystal Palace in this game. As you see there, Townsend plays a good ball through Jason Punch, and he takes the ball past on a Ruman and fires the ball past him. And their captain picks up his second goal of the game. And, um, well, we're 3-0 down now. So Callum Wilson's on the ball. He threads the ball through to Rashford. Surely played the advantage. We were through. And he's pulled the ball back for a foul. And I thought we were through on goal with Marcus Rashford there. But the referee obviously didn't seem that bothered about giving us the advantage. Of course it's a foul on Callum Wilson as he clips his ankles as he played the ball. But we've got a chance now. It's going to fall to Max Gradle. Max Gradle's going to try the shot. Can he get it up and over the wall? He strikes it. Hits the wall. Comes Harry Arter. Harry Arter goes for the strike. And his shot goes wide of the post as well. And to be honest, it is just not our day, is it? Harry Arter, what a goal that would have been. But it just went wide of the post. So Marcus Rashford is charging through on goal. Can we get a consolation goal? Marcus Rashford to go for the strike. 
And not even Marcus with the speed that Marcus Rashford's got. Not even he can sprint away from the defenders. However, we win the ball back with Callum Wilson. Wilson back to Rashford. Surely this time, uh, it's a penalty. There we go. We've been given a penalty. And that's the second penalty we've been given in this episode. Do we give it to Callum Wilson or do we give it to someone else? I think we're going to give it to Max Grader because Callum Wilson missed his previous penalty. Actually, no. We're going to give it to Callum Wilson. No, because, okay, this is it. Gradle's taking it. Callum Wilson wants to leave the club, so Gradle's going to take it. He goes to the right-hand side, and he scores. Let's pick up the ball, or can we not pick up the ball? No? Oh, just a little uh, celebration there as he claps his hand. But uh, Max Gradle, that's a better penalty. Well, the, goal, the goalkeeper went that way, would have saved it. But he kept the composure, went through the right way, and Max Gradle has given us the slightest of chance of getting ourselves back in the game now. So Benikafobe with the ball through to Marcus Rashford and just nothing is happening for us today. We brought on a few substitutes. We actually took off um, our goal scorer Gradle to try and get a little bit more attacking force down the centre. We wanted a little bit, of, little bit more of muscle actually um, down the centre of the park instead of a little bit of speed. And we brought on Benikafobe and he's done... F all since he's come on. We've got the ball with Marcus Rashford here. Rashford's going to try and take on Scott Dan down the right-hand side. Rashford cuts back inside. He's trying to play the ball back. Uh, it comes to Harry Arter. Harry Arter through to Callum Wilson. Wilson through to Afobe. And uh, there we go. Nothing is happening for us today, is it? It's just not our day. Have we got a chance here with Marcus Rashford to get another consolation? Rashford goes for goal, but it's a good save from Wayne Hennessy. And Fraser, can he get to that one before their player? No, he can't, but we do himself win our fact. Uh, win a throw for ourselves. We'll play the ball to Benikafobe, but I think this is pretty much it now. He whips the ball in the box. Can it Marcus Rashford win that header? No, he can't. And that looks like it's going to be game, set and match. It looks like it's going to be our first... Well, it is. It's going to be our first loss of the season and uh, we end up losing the game at 3-1 at Selhurst Park. We got completely played off the park. Very poor performance from us there and I was expecting a lot better but I suppose we aren't the best team in the world are we and we are going to be losing games but I was hoping that we were going to pick up all three points there but it wasn't to be. We've got to pick our heads up and move on to the next game. So it's gone to transfer deadline day and it says a player has been sold and it is Callum Wilson. Wilson's gone to West Brom for 5 million euros, so therefore we need a new striker. Who's it going to be? Let's see if we can bring in a new striker on deadline day. So we put in an 18 million bid for Angel Correa, and he has in fact accepted it. So what we're going to do, give him a contract, and let's see what Angel Correa says. He's the current 21-year-old from Atletico Madrid, and also Manchester City said they'll want 17 million for Ian Acho. So we will be thinking what we can spend that money that we got from Callum Wilson on, but we still need a right back and a centre back as well. So whether we've got enough money to splash out on 18 million or so. We will wait and see, but they have accepted a 15 million bid for Kelechi Iheanacho and we will offer him a 70,000 a week contract and a crucial first team player because that is in fact what he will be. He will be playing alongside Rashford and uh, Ankel Correa declines his contract there because he says he loves living and he want a little bit more. So go ahead and give him a little bit more. Uh, let's see if that will be enough to persuade the Argentinian striker to come to Bournemouth. Let's have a look here. Ankel Korea once again declines his contract, but Kalechi Iheanacho accepts his and he will be coming into the club. So that's a fantastic signing for us there. The 19-year-old will be joining and what a strike force we have now. Marcus Rashford and Kalechi Iheanacho playing together. That's going to be something special, isn't it? And we've got another transfer offer accepted, this time for Mikel Antonio, because basically what we wanted, we wanted to bring in Mikel Antonio because he could be a very versatile player. He can play right back, he can play right wing, he can play all over the shot. So that's why we want to bring him in. And he's only going to cost us six million as well. So I think that could be a fantastic deal for us. Let's see if we can pull it off. And yes, we can pull it off because he accepts his contract offer and that is going to be yet another player joining the club. And that's going to be it for transfer deadline day because I can guarantee now we're not going to be signing any more players. So having a look at the new signings we brought in, there he is, Kelechi Iheanacho, 76 rated. He's actually the same rating as what Callum Wilson was, but he has got a lot higher potential. And the other player we brought in is Mikel Antonio, 76 rated. As you see, they can play right mid, right back and left mid. And I can guarantee now he is going to be our first first choice right back so that is going to be it for this episode if you did enjoy it please make sure to hit the like button down below as it is going to be very much appreciated and don't forget if you're around here hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all my latest videos and career modes thank you so much for watching bye bye <laughs>